Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. So in the previous couple of lessons, we've looked at producers and we looked at show prep in detail. And we also had a live class where um, we came up with different types of content. And um, we looked at how important it is to prep this content before we actually go on air with it, okay? And when we spoke about production and producers specifically, and the role of the producer. We mentioned that it can be quite a tough gig um, and that good producer jobs are difficult to get because most of them demand long, stressful hours for a little reward. But when you get a good producer, you need to hang on to that producer as tightly as you can. We also mentioned how important the host-producer relationship is because a host and a producer spend a lot of time together, but professionals can work with just about anyone. We mentioned that great producers are developed, they're not born. And that when you're hiring a presenter, you're looking for promise and for potential. Okay? And you're trying to find someone who will be a good fit for a specific show and a host. And we said you shouldn't hire someone who wants to be on air because Production producing is uh, more a directing gig than an acting one. Producers are also the first people we turn to to look at if we're looking for a new program manager or program director because of um, their job behind the scenes and what they do, because it's their role to make the host sound better, um, to sound, make them sound great on air. We started talking about content in terms of using stories from your life. So bringing an idea from your own life, um, something that's happened to you, and then something you've overheard or observed. If you're snooping, those overheard stories make wonderful um, on-air moments. And then things that you talk to, off, uh, talk about off-air with your friends. You can bring things to air that you would actually talk about with your friends off air. And then what you do is you need to start finding universal language um, or the universal angle in all of these stories. Okay, So as a producer, that's what you do. You take all the content pieces that are given to you and you find the universal angle. So one of the things that we spoke about, we also spoke about the generator and reactor uh, pairings because the same rules that apply to, to two presenters on air would also apply to, for instance, the morning, um, the morning show host and producers, okay? It's, you always have to look at that generator-reactor pairing. And then one of the other things that we mentioned that, pro that producers need to do is screen calls. So before a caller gets put to air, they get they come to the they get put through or oh, well, the producer would talk to them first. When a caller calls a radio station, they would speak to the producer first, who so would decide um, whether or not to actually put this caller on air. Okay, and that's what we'll be talking about today. Specifically, is call screening and call screening in detail. Because if you want to be a presenter, this is a very important part of the role, okay, part of the job. So if you want to follow, you can turn to page 167 in your Valerie Geller textbook, um, which is on page, chapter 14, okay, which is what we're looking at the moment. And this is the last class of practical programming and making content, meaning we're starting a new module in the next class, okay? So part 15 of 15. This is a really important fact that you need to know, and that is a great caller can make a show, but a boring or a bad caller can be a show killer. You can literally almost feel the listeners tuning out. Um, like many tasks in life, screening appears to be very easy to do. Okay, You answer the phone and you put the call on air. What's so difficult about that? Well, that's not quite exactly how it goes. Screening involves being able to manage people. This is a role that takes both art and skill. When you turn over your, 
your broadcast, your show to a caller, that caller becomes partly responsible for maintaining your audience. According to Dennis Clark, who produces for the national for the nationally syndicated Ryan Seacrest show, uh, he says, think of the phone as a second or a third microphone. It doesn't matter that it's located elsewhere, treat it as another guest mic. Most producers have had the experience of putting what seemed to be a great call on air and then watch it bomb. Sometimes a call caller who seems to be a long shot, on the other hand, someone who's slow paced, slightly out of your demographic target, um, a little weird, will surprise you with his humor, his passion and a good story that he's got to tell. So how do you screen out bad or boring callers while attracting great ones? Are there methods to coach average or mediocre callers to become better and more powerful on air? That's what we look, that is what we're looking at. Contrary to popular belief, getting to speak on a talk show is not a given right in a free and democratic society. In order to qualify, you must have something to say. No matter what callers think or tell you, making it to air is not their right, okay? It's a privilege. It's a privilege that you can grant them or not. Not everyone who demands to be on air is going to get on air, nor should they. Use your callers to the show's advantage, not the other way around. Um, don't put a bad caller on air. Presenters may, presenters may sometimes go into a panic when they see there aren't a lot of calls coming through, or perhaps there are no callers waiting to be put on air. But it's you as a producer's job to remind the host that Less than 1%, okay, literally less than 1% of people that listen to you, of the listening audience, will ever phone um, a talk show. The number of blinking lights is a false indicator of how well a show is doing, okay? It's not really a telling tale, a telling tale. Unfortunately, hosts like to see a lot of calls or they get nervous. One solution would be to cover uh, the call light so they can't see who's waiting. The job of the presenter is to focus the issue in such an engaging manner that interesting people um, with strong opinions and something to say will actually want to call into the show. But having no calls is not an indication that the station or the show has no listeners. Sometimes our host can be so compelling Calls aren't even needed. Screening is a way to give power to a show, show by filtering out the elements that can hold back and make it boring. That's why we screen a show, to get out all those um, boring callers. It works best if the host does not make a big deal out of the screening process. Don't read off the computer screen. Avoid ruining the fun for listeners. Um, and for the host, by telling them in advance what they will hear. Just give them a hint. There's no journey if the presenter gives the show, gives the story away. So for instance, an example would be, Marianne line three, my screen says, you have a dog that found a million dollars in a garbage can? That eliminates the, the surprise of the story. Keep a bit of the magic of radio. Work with your hosts and encourage them not to reveal what's happening behind the scenes. So rather start that same story about Mary and the dog, like something uh, along the lines of, Mary, tell us about your amazing dog. Or just simply, Mary, you are on XFM. And then let her take it from there. So what makes a good caller? You always know one when you hear that caller. A successful talk show may reject as many as 50% of the calls that come in. A good caller is relevant, interesting, funny, poignant. This is a person who adds to the show and makes it better. Remember, normal people don't call talk shows. Sometimes those so-called normal people aren't all that interesting. 
Often it's the weird ones, the ones with the strange experiences and the vision and stories to tell who create those magic moments on air. If we look at a few tips, if, if you are bored screening the caller, how interesting will your audience find that person? If you're discussing a human experience, it often works better to put on callers who have lived through that experience and have a story to tell rather than an academic or an expert who's removed from the experience. Avoid multi-part questions or a long rambling uh, preamble. Before you decide to put a caller on air, make sure the point that they are, uh, are wanting to get across is concise, clear, and focused. If you are targeting a young audience, then it makes sense to avoid older sounding callers. However, those who are under 18 must be extremely articulate to be good. If we look at what Dennis Clark says, um, he says no listener should ever feel scared to call because they might be humiliated or embarrassed. It's good customer service to thank a caller, but do this off air. If we look at um, callers on air, now on the other hand, Dennis Clark has the following system that he suggests. And number one there is name and place. So first identify the caller and find out where they're calling from. So think locally whenever possible, um, suburb and city, okay? Next is the point. Because most callers are not trained broadcasters, they may be repetitive or boring um, or dilute their initial points. So because of this, it's best to go with their first point that they'd like to make. Um, their second and third points are usually weaker and may dilute the, the caller's initial point. And thirdly, they're the close. Closing the call is, some, is something of an audio hug. Um, not the thank you for calling, but it should end in a positive or a warm closeout. You can fade out the call and then acknowledge the caller. The purpose is to let other callers know that this is a safe place for them to call and that they can join our circle with confidence. Jeremy Miller of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation advises to pre-record calls for music radio rather than taking them live because pre-recorded calls is a good way to make sure you're getting the best call the caller has to offer let the interview go as long as you like and then listen back to it pick out a single point of gold then edit out everything else that isn't necessary or um, to the call or the story a lot of radio stations want to air callers who sound the most like the demographic group their station is targeting, but vital, passionate, interesting callers who have good questions, a sense of humor, um, people who are great storytellers, who, or people who have personal experiences of what you are talking about. Those are the type of callers that'll always work, no matter their age. Train your callers. Avoid what we call greeting cards, such as, thank you for taking my call, or we love your show. Avoid the, how are you today? How are you today? Um, I'm fine, thank you. How are you today? The host is fine. The caller is fine. Everyone's fine. Congratulations and greetings of no interest to the listener. Get to the topic. Don't be afraid to say, get to the point. We're very happy you love the show. Great. But the long hello is boring. This is a radio show, not a phone conversation, even though it may, might feel to you like it is a phone conversation because you are holding a phone. Give your caller rules. Um, so tell them things like no reading of prepared statements or articles. You'll need to ask questions or make your comment without a long preamble. No multi-part questions, okay? So things like that. The host will hang up, hang up on you. The host will hang up on you. To avoid callers calling back um, after they've been on air complaining that the host rudely hang up on them, alert the caller 
prior to them going on air, um, that when the host is done, they will abruptly disconnect the line and thank them before they go on air. While this might seem a little bit impolite and back way around, um, this is just how it works. It's radio. Before a caller is about to go on air, check back to make sure that they are still waiting on the line and still ready to go. You may need to remind the caller about the original point um, if they've been holding on for a while. Remind them again to turn their radios off, important. Stay in communication with the host throughout the course of the program. Although you might be busy screening, try not to listen or do try to listen to the show and follow the thread of the program. And it's important to realize that there are nice ways to, there are many nice ways to say no. A screener needs a backbone, okay? That doesn't mean be rude, but it does mean be firm. Get a screener who can tell people no. Hire someone who can make a fast decision to get rid of a boring call. Ask, would this person keep a listener engaged? If you think the caller or the guest would be, boring, uh, would be boring to a listener, don't put them on air. It's as simple as that. Have a simple script for screening callers. So something like, for instance, answer the phone with the station's name or the name of the show. Um, if the call caller doesn't immediately come across as concise to the point um, or with their opinion, Help them focus. So ask them, what is your opinion? Why is this important to you? Can you give me a brief summary of your point? If the caller still doesn't meet your criteria, they should be rejected. The, remind the caller to speak clearly into the phone. You need to work um, <clears throat> You need to work quickly in order to have the next call up and you need to work quickly in order to have the next call up and ready to go. There should never be a time when a host can't move on to the next call, okay? You should always have your next call lined up and ready to go. If the caller meets your criteria, summarize his or her point and opinion on the computer screen for the host. That, allow, that allows for the presenter to take the call, um, to take the calls in the order that they prefer. Clear audio is very important. If someone is calling from a, um, on a noisy mobile, not hearing the caller clearly won't help your show. No one likes to say no, particularly if the, the caller is a sweet old lady who lives by herself with no friends. Um, and this call to you, to your show right now is the only adult conversation that she's had all week. But you still need to protect your product. Serve thousands, not one. It's hard to do, but it's your job to take care of the show, not the caller. So politely say, no, I'm sorry, um, but I'm not going to be able to take your call. Not today, perhaps another time. If we look at other polite uh, rejections, there are things that you can say, like for instance, we're running out of time this hour. Um, thank you, I'll pass your comment along. We can't use your call today, but we appreciate you taking the time to call. Do not give them time to respond. Politely disconnect. Be tough, but professional. Should a rejected caller become angry or try to engage you in a conversation or argument rather, don't get upset or rattled. If there's time, hear the caller out and then hung up. The management has hired you for your ability to judge what will make a winning show. Most reasonable management will support you in your decision to protect your show from boring callers. Avoid speaker phones or bad sound lines. As I've mentioned earlier, if the reception is poor, don't put that caller on air, even if it's a, a sweet old lady. Also, avoid callers with heavy accents um, who won't easily be understood. You definitely don't want your producer to anger your audience, but your audience is really the 99% of your listeners who will never phone. So keep that in mind. 
if we look at a rule about the regulars, the only real rule about regular callers is this. Bad regular callers should not get on. Good regular callers should. In fact, we sometimes hire hosts um, who've been regular callers. Your callers are your active listeners. They are the loyal. Um, they are loyal. They listen regularly, and they're not too shy to call. One sharp producer made up a database of the characters or the powerful callers on his show. He kept this list um, on the computer. Every now and then, when the board was slow and the night was long, he'd phone those people and ask them by chance if they were listening. If not, they tune in, they'd tune in right away and usually come up with some good comments to move the show forward. This producer also had a second use for his list of phone numbers and email addresses. Um, when the host was scheduled to make public appearances or when the host was scheduled to make a public appearance or a speech, he would email an announcement to those listeners who had asked to be included. Many enjoyed attending these events. To best determine the order of the calls, keep track of the show topic and be aware of the, of the points of view of the host and each guest. Conflict makes interesting dialogue. If your host enjoys it and it's appropriate, appropriate for the program, move calls um, that don't agree with the host to the front of the line. If the show has guests representing several points of view, then alternate um, the caller's point of view whenever possible. In reality, you may not get an equal division or balance of callers reflecting pros and cons on any issue, but you can try through the pre-screening process to eliminate clusters of similar callers and opinions. Push the interesting ones, the ones with passion to the top. The first call on the show should always be the best available caller. That first call often sets the tempo for the rest of the hour. Come out of each break with the strongest, most energetic, and passionate caller that you have waiting. So if you have a situation like she's been waiting for 48 minutes, so what? The point is to make a powerful broadcast um, for the listeners. So if the host chooses to go with another topic or go along with a caller or a guest, let them wait. Even if they get mad and yell at you, the first priority at all times is to protect the product on air and make sure it's powerful. He sounded fine when I pre-interviewed him. People get nervous when they actually go on air. Every call screener has had the experience of listening helplessly as a caller who sounded so great before they hit the airwaves, floundering um, when the host takes the call. Here's why. We are around live broadcasts all the time, and we forget that it can be a terrifying experience for someone who doesn't do this every day. Coach callers to take a breath, to get right to the point. Don't read, to not read from notes, um, to be as normal as you would in a conversation, to forget that others are listening, and not to worry about looking foolish, because that's what it comes down to. Usually people lose the nervousness as soon as they get onto a familiar topic or a subject about which they feel passionate. That's why we need to work with callers to help get them there as soon as possible in the call. Put yourself on hold. If as a producer or a screener, you, have, you haven't had the experience of calling a radio or a television talk show, try calling somebody else's show. See how the process feels when you get screened. Um, when the shoe is on the other foot, you'll be amazed. When you understand what it feels like to be on hold, then it's your turn. And when you are on air with a question for a host or a guest, um, it will add another perspective and allow you to be more effective as a screener, okay, at the end of the day. And then presenters like to use interactive media. 
But the rule for including emails and in instant messages is, is the content relevant? During the business day, some people might not be able to use their phones to call a talk show. So you might be able to get more opinions um, on the air using email or messages. Be aware though that reading messages on the air is not as interesting as having an actual person delivering his or her thoughts um, in their own voice. Reading messages should be a second choice if you had a good if you have a good call waiting. If you do use text messages from listeners on the air, try reading them with drama. Try introdu introducing the sender actively, for example, Carol, you're in Spring Hill. You say you've had, you say you've been watching shoplifters at your neighborhood market. Using a you to address the sender makes the message sound more like a live conversation with a caller, even though it's not. Stations that run edited interviews or performances um, on the air are allowing listeners to access the long form or complete versions from their websites. Your show or station website should also be used to move detailed content, such as a, guest's, a guest author's mailing address, a recipe, contest rules out of your broadcast, and make it available to the audience at their convenience. As a producer, if your host promises listeners they will find a piece of information on your station's website, it is your job to make sure it gets there. If you don't, it makes your host and your station look bad. Okay, so if we take a look at Geller Media International's uh, tips for talk show producers and screeners, these have all emerged over um, out of workshops over a couple of years. So number one there, focus on your audience, not the 1% of the listeners who call in. Make sure your host has material to talk about if there are no calls coming in. Plan your show as if there will be no calls, okay? So prep, prep for anything. Don't let all your lines jam. Screen out weak calls and keep some lines open so that better calls can come in. If you don't understand a caller, nobody else will either. So get rid of that call. Get your callers relaxed and talking, but don't promise them that they will be on air. Build a database of sources that you can use during the show for alternate or opposing opinions, um, or for emergency guests if the planned guest cancels. Cross-reference by areas of expertise, affiliations, etc. And then build, also build a database of great callers. On a quiet day, a savvy producer can use that list um, to find what to find one great caller to go on the air. Be sure to give guests specific instructions on how to get into the studio and phone contact information. Because what happens if the station door is locked? Guests should email background materials ahead of time for the host to study. Guests should understand who their audiences will be. Make sure that a guest knows uh, that the host will take care of any promotion for their book or their seminar and so forth. There's nothing worse than a guest doing an awkward job of self-promotion. Okay, so let them know that you'll take care of that. Develop a good relationship with your news department because you're always going to need them. If something major occurs, don't be afraid to cancel a guest. Radio's greatest asset is immediacy. Go with what's happening now and reschedule everything else. And then lastly, if we look at page 177, the caller criteria. Number one there, can he or she offer an interesting personal experience pertaining to this topic? Pertaining to this topic. Do you or the audience care about this person? Does this person sound like a distinctive character? If you can see this person in your mind's eye, it's a good character. Number three, is he or she a good storyteller? Does he or she have a sense of humor? 
does this caller have a strong passionate opinion on a subject? Is it a person you would find fascinating or enjoy talking with off air? Can this caller take the audience on a journey they can't get on their own? Number eight, does he or she have something interesting or something of value to say? Number nine, can he or she offer new information about a story or a subject or add specific knowledge or special expertise? And lastly, number 10, are they entertaining? That's what it boils down to, are they entertaining? Okay, so in summary, number one, if we take everything that we've looked at now and we summarize it, then it looks as follows. A great caller can make a show, a boring or a bad caller can be a show killer. How do you screen out? And then we looked at how do you screen out bad or boring callers while attracting great ones? Are there methods to coach average or mediocre callers to becoming better and more powerful on air? Yes. A successful talk show may reject as many as 50% of the calls that come in. Five, there are tips of how to create those magic moments. Six, if a caller does not meet the criteria of the host, the show, the topic, they should be rejected. Number seven, bad regular callers shouldn't get on. Good regular callers should. Number eight, the order or sequence of calls is done by keeping track of the show topic and prioritizing who is on hold. And lastly, number nine, if the hosts show promise there is more information on recorded segments on the website, make certain the promise um, is kept. Okay. And that brings us to the end of this lecture. Okay, so there was quite a lot of um, information to take in there. But hopefully by now you can see how important it is that callers are screened correctly before they're being put on air in all the different ways. Okay, so this brings us to the end of practical programming and making content. So in the next lecture, we'll be starting with something new, two point, uh, module 2.10, okay? So until then, for now, I say goodbye.